The two most popular pets in the world are cats and dogs. And as a test to see how we view our pets, I'm going to use Google Suggest. And so we'll start with dogs and let's see what happens when I type dogs are. And the suggest fill in options give us some clues as to how people generally see dogs. Your results may vary, but these are some pretty good indicators. And let's see what we've got here. Dogs are awesome. Dogs are awesome video. Dogs are better than cats. Dogs are stupid. And dogs are people too. And these are mostly positive attributions. Uh, dogs are stupid obviously isn't very nice, but dog awesome, awesome video, better than cats, people too. That mostly a positive idea that you get an idea from this that people mostly have a positive view of dogs, and you should expect that because we wouldn't keep so many dogs as pets if we didn't like them, right? Uh, and to show, let's see how it's different when we try type cats are, and here we've got cats are jerks. Cats are better than dogs, cats are jerks video, cats are liquid, and cats are evil. Um, and this tells something of a different story. Two of the top responses are cats are jerks and cats are evil. Which is kind of weird for such a popular pet that obviously there's some popular sentiment not liking cats. Uh, now, part of this is in jest, of course, uh, people making jokes and joke videos and that sort of thing. But why would we even joke about cats being evil? Hi there. Uh, now, now consider all the media that portrays cats as deeply selfish or insidious or sneaky. Think of Garfield the Cat or those Cats and Dogs movies or any one of dozens of internet memes. I have friends, intelligent people whom I respect, who I've heard espouse the old wives' tale that cats murder infant children by stealing their breath. And this isn't merely a horrifying accusation to make, but it's also baseless and ludicrous. And even amongst people I know who like cats, I'll often hear comments where they'll portray their cherished pets as sort of villainous in this sort of half-joking way. Uh, one comment I've heard a couple times goes something like, Oh, I love my cat and all, but I think she's planning to kill me. And what's strange about this, all this sort of talk of cats thinking about murdering humans, is that cats don't kill people. In the United States, dogs kill about 30 people a year, while cats kill zero, and they also cause fewer injuries. Now it's worth noting that house, house cats just really can't get big enough to be a serious threat to humans, and it's also worth noting that most dog-related deaths and injuries are an indirect result of poor human training or neglect. But even still, considering how popular cats are, and considering how harmless they are to humans, it's strange that we should have all this sort of cultural weight behind the idea that cats somehow have malicious intent towards us. And I have three theories about why this might be the case that I'd like to share. And the first theory deals with the way which we organize our minds. When we compare two different things, sometimes we have a tendency to not just look for similarities and differences, comparing and contrasting, but to find ways in which the two things are opposites. Because if two things are diametrically opposed in key ways, it becomes that much easier to file them away mentally and make sense of them than if we have to consider all the myriad details that make two things different. So for example, men and women are often thought of as opposites, even though we're all humans and have way more similarities than we do differences. Fast food restaurants and sit-down restaurants are sometimes thought of as sort of opposite, even though they're both restaurants. Adults and children can be seen as opposites. Light skin and dark skin can be seen as opposites. Cars and trucks can be seen as opposites. Right-handed and left-handed people, etc. 
And because dogs and cats are our most common pets, we naturally compare them a lot. And this leads to us thinking of them as opposites in some ways, even though really deep down they're quite similar animals. And there are, though there are some key differences between the two. Of course, cats tend to be more introverted and shy, while dogs tend to be more outgoing. Cats are naturally solitary hunters, while dogs are naturally pack hunters. And since dogs are so openly loyal a lot of the time, and so crave socialization, and are just so often just eager to please, that in looking at cats as the opposite of dogs, we can be tricked into looking at cats as disloyal, or antisocial, or apathetic. Yet compared with humans, cats really aren't that aloof, but co even though compared with dogs they are. Compared with humans, cats really aren't that sneaky, but compared with dogs, they sort of are. And compared with humans, cats really aren't that selfish, but compared with dogs, they should do kind of look selfish. And the second theory I'd like to present relates to the most overarching fear there is, the fear of the unknown. As mentioned, dogs are social animals. They prefer to live and hunt in groups. By contrast, cats are generally solitary travelers and hunters. As a result, dogs are naturally more expressive because they need to communicate with pack mates. The dogs have more expressive faces than cats. They use more boisterous body language, and they tend to be louder and more vocal. And because they're so expressive, it's much easier to tell what a dog is thinking and feeling and wanting. And because cats aren't as expressive as dogs, we have to use our imaginations, or our, we have to think about, use, use our brains to fill in what we think the cat is thinking and feeling. So while cats may not have wildly different motivations compared to dogs, it's so much easier to imagine them having nefarious aims because we can't easily tell what their mental state is just by looking at them. And this mystery extends to simply knowing what cats are up to. Uh, cats prefer some time alone relative to dogs, and they can generally be trusted to do their own thing uh, without causing destruction or mayhem. By contrast, many dogs, especially younger dogs, really need supervision, because if they're left alone, they're almost bound to get into trouble. And so, sort of paradoxically almost, because we can trust cats more, because we can sort of leave them to their own devices more, we know less about what they're up to, and that just gives our brain free reign to fill in the gaps of what the cat's been up to all day. Something suspicious, something dangerous, something insidious. Our brains are free to run wild with that sort of thing, which is not the case with dogs. And those first two theories are pretty straightforward. You may not agree, but pretty basic psychological concepts. Uh, but with this third theory, we're going to stray a little further afield and have a little fun. And I'm going to posit that perhaps we trust dogs so much because when we look at them, we see a mirror of our society a mirror of our civilization. Humans and dogs, in a sense, grew up together. Dogs are descended from the wolves that learned to live around and work with humans, and dogs were the first animals domesticated by pretty much all human societies. Human beings have risen to such a dominant position on the earth, in large part because of how we work together to hunt as a team, to build stable societies, to share food and household duties, to craft complex social hierarchies, to build monuments and cities, and to wage war. When we look at our good friends the dogs, perhaps we subconsciously see the social tools that allowed us to become the wildly successful species we are, are today. Conversely, when we look at our other good friends, the cats, we see a different pattern. We see the solitary hunter and the lonely traveler. Patterns that still have a place in our society, but perhaps 
elements of ourselves that we had to overcome to become, to get to where we are. And this all ties back to another subject I've discussed uh, about why we fear spiders so much, and specifically, why we fear spiders so much more than bees or wasps. For not only are bees and wasps generally more dangerous to humans than spiders, their coloration is specifically designed to look threatening. If you've seen sort of the wasp face, it's like and black and yellow, this deep contrast, and it basically says, I am dangerous, stay away from me. But perhaps the reason we're not as afraid of them as it would make sense to be is because when we look at a wasp nest or a beehive or even an ant colony, we subconsciously see civilization in miniature. We see teamwork in action, a division of labor, and a social hierarchy. We see in the strength of bees and wasps much of what makes us so strong. In addition, they always seem to be working. Not much room for sneaky thoughts when you're busy as a bee. By contrast, spiders are sort of deeply symbolically lonely. They're either scuttling along looking for prey or sitting so very still in their webs. What do they think about all day, sitting there so still? The only social and the only socialization most spiders get is to mate, and these interactions are often colored by the possibility that the female will eat the male. So, if you wanted to think about what's the what's sort of the most antisocial animal you can think of, if you want to compare sort of uh, compare to humans, spiders might top the list. And so, maybe the reason we fear spiders so much is for similar reasons that we distrust cats so much, even though cats are popular and we like them. Because they form this stark contrast with animals that remind us more of our society and remind us more of what, what helped us build our modern world. Or, or maybe not, it, but it's fun to think about. Uh, anyway, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on these issues. Uh, why do you think so many people distrust cats? Uh, I did a video similar to this about spiders, and the comments on that video really made me rethink a lot and changed my perspective, and I'm hoping the same will happen here. So, thank you for watching.